So for our second talk of this morning, I'm very, very pleased to have uh, Anjla Shivas. The title of his talk is Signature, Cusp Geometry, and Machine Learning. Thank you. Uh, can you see it in full screen? Looks great. Yeah, OK, thank you. Uh, it's doing some weird things. OK. Uh, right, so uh, this is a project where we used machine learning as a tool to uh, find an interesting relationship uh, between the cusp geometry of hyperbolic knots and the signature. And what I'd like to focus on is the process that we used uh, in order to find these results, as, as this is a technique that uh, we believe can be useful uh, in other areas of mathematics. So this is joint work with Alex Davis, Mark Leckenby, and Nena Tomashev, where Alex Davis and Nena Tomashev uh, work in machine learning and deep mind. Okay, so uh, let me uh, quickly recap some hyperbolic uh, invariants of uh, knots. So let K be a hyperbolic knot in the tree sphere, which means uh, that uh, its complement has uh, this complete uh, finite volume hy hyperbolic metric. And uh, one of the fundamental invariants you can extract is, of course, the volume. So by most of rigidity, the hyperbolic metric is unique up to isometry and whatever topologic, uh, whatever geometric quantity uh, you define using that metric will be a topological invariant of that knot. Now, if you take a max maximal cusp neighborhood of your knot, uh, this is like a tubular neighborhood of your knot, then you look at the boundary that uh, will be a Euclidean torus, which you can view as the complex plane quotiented out by some lattice lambda. And if you, if you take the longitude of your knot, and lift it uh, to C, then you can normalize things that it runs from zero to a positive real number lambda. And this positive real number is called the longitudinal translation of your knot. And then similarly, you can lift the meridian starting from the origin in, in the complex plane and it ends at some complex number mu, and we can uh, assume that it has positive imaginary part, and this is called the meridional translation. So this lattice lambda is generated by lambda uh, and mu. Uh, so our goal uh, when we started out was to find some relationship between um, the hyperbolic and, say, four-dimensional knot invariants where by four-dimensional knot invariants, we looked at things like signature and various hagar fleur invariants like tau, nu, epsilon, and then maybe the kovanov s invariant. And we found various relationships, but somehow the strongest signal was between uh, the cusp shape and the signature. And signature is, of course, the easiest to compute of all these invariants. So the data that we looked at initially was from the knot info data set, which contains knots up to 12 crossings, and then later at uh, the Regina census, which has knots up to 16 crossings. And then we also generated these random knot diagrams using Snappy of 80 crossings when uh, you, know, you apply Snappy Simplify. Of course, you might have some duplicates, but you can get rid of these uh, by using various knot invariants. So this was a data set of 10 to the 6 knots, approximately. And so what we used was a supervised learning model uh, to detect patterns between uh, a large set of geometric invariants and the signature. So supervised learning uh, what it means is you have a data set you want to predict uh, maybe B from A. And uh, so basically you are trying to find approximate a function 
The simplest example would be maybe linear regression, where you're just trying to fit a line, but there are more advanced models uh, going up to uh, neural networks uh, where uh, you have highly non-linear things that you are trying to fit on your data. And so you, you take part of your data where you can test uh, how good your approximation is. So you need some metric, maybe an L2 metric by which you measure error of the model that or the approximation that you got. So for those of you who are interested in the technical details, uh, what we used was a fully connected feed for a new neural network uh, with three hidden units of uh, size 300 each. So what this is, is just like a composition of, of linear maps between uh, vector spaces of dimension 300 in the middle, so like large matrices. And there is some nonlinearity that you have to apply. And what the training of such a model does is uh, you do sort of gradient descent to try to uh, optimize the, the coefficients of these matrices uh, so that the error is as small as possible. Now, here is an example of some of the uh, geometric quantities that we considered. And so remember, we were trying to predict the signature. And then there are the so-called uh, attribution techniques, which are also known as uh, saliency maps, uh, where you can figure out which of the features, input features, so which quantities uh, are more, most predictive of uh, what you are trying to uh, estimate, namely the signature. And basically, you are just taking partial derivatives with respect to these uh, quantities. And it turned out that the three most predictive ones were the uh, imaginary and real parts of the meridional uh, translation the longitudinal translation. And then there was weaker signal in uh, the complex length of short geodesics and the injectivity radius. But this sort of seem like they are less important, but you will see later that actually they turned out to be crucial to finding the right conjecture. So, here, it, so th this is like these gradient-based techniques uh, for finding uh, what are the most important quantities that predict the signature. So you have these very complicated functions and these lots of variables, and so you have. We found, you know, that it's the longitudinal and meridional translation which determine the cusp shape that somehow tell us something about the signature. So then we plotted. Uh, the most salient features versus the signature and colored by the slope, uh, uh, sorry, volume. And we got this rather curious plot. Um, so you could, we, we use volume here, uh, but you could also take crossing number. They are sort of equivalent. And as you can see, uh, there is some nonlinear relationship between the real part of the meridional translation, the signature, and, and the volume. So this is, this is on a large data set of, of hyperbolic knots. And there are various things you might conjecture. The crudest thing would be there is some relationship between the signs of the real part of the meridional translation and the signature. Uh, uh, which actually uh, turned out to be false. Uh, so then uh, one, if you want to write down the following quantity, which uh, we call the natural slope for a hyperbolic knot, uh, is you take the longitudinal translation divided by the meridional translation and take its real part. And we call this uh, the natural slope of the knot. So there were some similar quantities showing up in earlier work, but like exactly in this form, this is 
uh, kind of new, but it quantifies the shape of, uh, of this uh, lattice that determines the, the cusp. And here is a more geometric interpretation. So here is, is, is the cusp torus, and you take a meridian, and then uh, you uh, go along an orthogonal geodesic starting from the merid merid meridian, and uh, you come back, you go around uh, the longitude, and you hit the meridian again at some point, which might not be the exact same point. And so uh, by the time you return to the meridian, you have traveled one longitude minus some multiple s of the meridian. And it's a simple exercise to show that this s is the natural slope of your nut k. Now, if you plot a signature version slope, now you can observe uh, an approximately linear relationship between the uh, slope and signature. So this is for random knots uh, for 10 to 80 crossings. When I take, you know, crossing number, I mean uh, the crossing number in the snappy simplified form, the actual crossing number, of course, might be smaller. And the question is, what's the error? I mean, clearly there is some error term and so our first conjecture was that uh, the difference between twice the signature and the slope is some linear function of the volume of your knot. And this was supported by several large data sets sampled from different dif distributions. So it seemed like, you know, this must be true. Uh, but actually, uh, we managed to obtain counter examples uh, using highly twisted knots that I'm going to talk about in a second. But so this is actually an uh, important caveat whenever uh, you try to conjecture something uh, using large data sets. You know, uh, there might be some counterexamples lurking in some uh, non generic uh, family somewhere. So st statistics is, is a strange thing. Uh, now, I should mention that we still believe that asymptotically, almost surely, uh, this twice signature minus the slope can be bounded by a linear function of square root of the volume. And there is some reasonably good heuristic why that should be the case. So for a generic knot, this would be true. So I mentioned this highly twisted uh, knot. Uh, it's a bit technical to state, but it's not uh, so complicated. Uh, so we take a, a knot and we take a collection of uh, on knots C1, Cn uh, in the complement of your knot uh, that bound these joint disks. Uh, and suppose that if you take your knot together with these uh, circles C1, Cn, uh, that's a hyperbolic link. And now we denote by k of q1, qn to be the knot obtained by adding qi full twists uh, to the strings going through ci. And if li is the linking number between ci and the knot for some orientations, uh, then some of these li's will be even. And we can assume that the first m of these are even and the rest are odd. And so the statement is that there is some constant k, which depends on the knot and the circle C1, Cn, such that for uh, qi sufficiently large, uh, the slope plus sum of li squared times qi in absolute value is at most k. So this shows how the slope changes uh, asymptotically as, as the number of twists gets very large. And on the other hand, the signature changes by a slightly different quantity, which is shown here, where you have to take into account whether your linking number is even or odd. 
and so this allows one to to construct uh, knots where uh, you introduce many twists and the difference between the signature and the slope uh, will not be bounded by the volume because if you do this twisting then the volume is, is doesn't change very say that it remains bounded right so what is the theorem that uh, we managed to prove well uh, first let me define the injectivity radius of a knot and this is defined to be you take your uh, knot and you remove the maximal cusp n and then you take the injectivity radii of, of the point of this remaining manifold and you take the infimum of that. And so the theorem is that there is some constant uh, such that for any hyperbolic knot k, uh, twice the signature minus the slope is bounded from above by constant times the volume uh, divided by the cube of the injectivity radius. And the, the C1 is the same as C, that's a typo. So what do we know about this constant? Uh, we know that it is at least 0.2339. Uh, but more interestingly, uh, it seems that the, this constant is not very large. And uh, the largest value we managed to obtain using this highly twisted knots, namely some family of certain braids was 0 0.234. So we sort of, uh, based on this conjecture that maybe sees at most 0.3. So this is fairly small, but like it would be uh, very interesting if one could show that we have this uh, constant. And so let's look at some examples. Uh, here you can see uh, a 12 crossing knot and on the right uh, is cusp, cusp torus as drawn by snappy and so the longitude has length 27.7 approximately and here is the meridian um, and so from this you can compute that the natural slope is minus 18.6 approximately and this signature is minus eight, which is indeed, you see, twice the signature is close to the slope. And you can note that, so in this picture, in purple, you can see uh, the fundamental domain uh, of, of this lattice. And this is a very skewed parallelogram. Uh, so this is very far from being right angle and that's exactly uh, the defining feature of having very large positive or very large negative slope so this has some simple applications uh, this theorem uh, uh, ian agol and so independently mark lackenby showed that if s is a surgery slope for a knot that has length greater than six, then S is not an exceptional slope, which means that uh, the infilling or the surgery with this slope gives you a hyperbolic three manifold. And using that, one can show that if K is a hyperbolic knot uh, and P over Q uh, is a slope that satisfies this inequality so it's not too far from the signature uh, the error is involves the volume and the injectivity radius uh, or the modulus of p is greater than eight then p over q dane surgery along your knot gives a hyperbolic three manifold uh, so here uh, this condition on p being bigger than eight uh, uses a result of Lackenby and Meyerhoff. So this is uh, something that, uh, to our knowledge, hasn't been observed so far that uh, exceptional surgeries are somehow centered around twice the signature. So here is an example. If you look at 12 and 242, 
right? As which is what, what we looked at before. Uh, it has seven ex exceptional slopes listed here. They all lie in the interval 16, 20, which contains both minus the slope and minus twice the signature. Now, since the slope, uh, the signature gives a lower bound than the topological four genus, if you reverse this theorem, we get that using the hyperbolic geometry, namely the slope, you can get a lower bound on the topological four genus, which is also kind of surprising. Okay, so uh, let me say a few words about the proof of this main theorem. This uh, was shown you by constructing a nice panning surface uh, with the specified slope uh, along the boundary torus of the knot, uh, which is of uh, independent interest. So there is some constant such that for every hyperbolic knot, uh, there is an unoriented spanning surface F for your knot K, um, whose Euler characteristic has absolute value at most constant times the volume divided by the cube of the injectivity radius. So it's like, uh, and, and furthermore, uh, the boundary slope of the surface is N, where N is a, a even integer closest to slope k. So it's, it gives some information about the cross cap number of the knot if you fix um, the specific boundary slope. And, and this is shown used by constructing a nice triangulation of uh, the complement of the max maximal uh, cusp neighborhood uh, where the number of tetrahedra is bounded by the volume uh, of the knot and the ejectivity radius. And then to obtain uh, this theorem relating signature and slope, uh, one uses uh, the gordon Liderland signature formula. So uh, the boundary be behavior comes in from that formula because when you take the signature of the Guritz matrix, then there is also a term which measures the normal Euler number. And so this, this is uh, given by this uh, natural slope, or at least this closest even integer. Right, now, if you don't like the injectivity radius showing up in our bound, there is a refinement of this uh, inequality which uses short geodesics. And I should mention here that remember that when we looked at the most salient, the most important features uh, that uh, determine signature, you know, there was the meridional translation, the longitudinal translation, but then the next two were injectivity radius and, and uh, short geodesics. And in fact, injectivity radius showed up in our bound, and now short geodesics showed up here. So it would have saved us a lot of time we actually, if we actually you know, followed what the uh, machine learning was telling us in the beginning. Uh, so let uh, odd geo epsilon over 2 denote the set of geodesics in the knot complement that has length at most epsilon over 2 and have odd linking number with k. Uh, Actually, if you compare this with uh, the previous result about how uh, the signature and slope change when you do twists around uh, circles that link your knot, there was a distinction between even and odd linking. So this is related to that. And furthermore, let uh, for uh, integers p and q, kappa of pq, will be to be the signature of the PQ torus knot plus P, o, P times Q over two. So this is a signature correction term, uh, which I think goes back, it's like it can be computed using a simple recursive formula by work of Gordon and Lillerland. And for a geodesic gamma, 
uh, there is this slightly complicated quantity. Uh, uh, it's a pair of integers, twist p gamma and twist q gamma. It's a pair of co-prime integers p and q such that p is even, q is odd and non-negative, and subject to this condition, if you take the complex length of gamma times p uh, plus 2 pi i times q, uh, this is minimized, where the complex length of gamma is this geodesics is, uh, has real part the actual length, and then the imaginary part uh, measures uh, the, uh, the twisting around the geodesic. So we choose a PQ that is minimal with respect to the lexicographical ordering if it's non-unique. And so here is the refined theorem, which says if epsilon 3 is the Margulis constant, which shows up in the thick thin decomposition of hyperbolic manifolds, and epsilon is a positive constant, which is less than epsilon 3, then there is some constant C4, which depends on this epsilon, such that for any hyperbolic not K, uh, signature and slope over 2 minus the sum over these odd geodesics of length less than epsilon 2, this uh, kappa of, of, of these twisting parameters. These differ by at most constant times the volume. So here the upper bound doesn't depend on the, the injectivity radius anymore. And so uh, what these kappas do is um, if you sort of remove neighborhoods of uh, these short geodesics uh, that have odd linking number with your knot, uh, and you construct some surface um, which along the boundary of the knot has slope, the natural slope, basically, then you can fill in with a surface uh, that will contribute this kappa uh, twist p, twist q uh, to the uh, signature of the Göris form. So that's uh, why this shows up here. Okay, so that's what I had in mind today. Let's thank Andras.